Hello everybody, it's Belinda, and I'm here to do another book chat with you. Um, I picked this book, um, and it's called Hidden Figures, and it's by Margaret, or Margot Lee Shutterly. I had saw, about two months ago, an ad on the TV for the movie called Hidden Figures. And it had, I have to cheat because I don't remember, it had three actresses that I was really intrigued to watch. So um, I had never heard anything before about this topic. And um, when I saw the preview, I said, well, God, I want to go see that movie. The movie comes out in January 6th. And my cheat sheets here tells me it's um, Taraji P. Henson, um, Octavia Spencer, and Janelle Monet. And I, I, I think, I don't know if Janelle has acted before prior to this, I've just seen her sing, um, but they're going to be portraying the three main characters that this book covers. Um, and so when I saw the previews for this, I was really excited. I knew nothing about the book. When I found out it was uh, about, uh, based on a book, I ran and pre-ordered the book and I got it from um, Amazon and I was super excited to, when it arrived. Uh, I, you know, background um, information is, you know, as a person of color, um, a black woman in particular, I get excited when I see um, achievements by people that look like me. So as soon as I saw the movie and the actresses, I knew I wanted to see it and I wanted to read the book because I feel like, you know, we struggle in this country with um, presenting history, including everyone. And um, I like the idea of being able to educate myself a little more um, about these particular women that this um, author actually researched that contributed to the space, um, the uh, um, working in NASA and to the space endeavors in this country, as well as um, working just on flight and uh, airplane um, cre creations. So I think that I was really excited about it. So I, I, I wanted to get the book. Then I think it was Dee Dee and I thought saw Brie talking about nonfiction November and I was listening and I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. You know, I, I do have a lot of nonfiction books and I'm actually going to be reading one. And I was like, yeah, but I, I kind of shy away from these um, challenges because I feel like I have enough to read and I don't like somebody to tell me what to do. And whenever I'm faced with that, I'm not very good at following through. So Dee Dee was like, no, you ever, you're doing nonfiction November. You're reading a book. So, so here's mine. And I did also... Um, listen to two nonfiction audiobooks. So if I get a chance after my blabbering with this, I'll mention them. If not, maybe in another uh, video. But I got the book and the book is about, um, it, it focuses on these particular three women and it spans between the 30s up until about the 70s. Um, and um, it's what was kind of fascinating about it was that, you know, back then in the thirties, the job that they held, you know, they were all like mathematicians and they were phenomenal, you know, and, and just knowing that there were black women that were mathematicians at this high level back then just blows my mind. It's, it's amazing. And it's, um, it just puts a smile on my face. But at that time, the jobs that they got, they were called computers. We didn't have our, you know, Max or you know RBM, we, we didn't have those computers that we have today. So they did all these calculations by hand themselves with their brain, um, and that's you know that the, these are the jobs that they came in. And, and those books explored them, their journey getting into these jobs, and the day to day kind of um, struggles. You know, racial a little bit of racial. Uh, tensions around that. Um, but surprisingly, you know, with all that was going on in terms of race relations in the country and segregation and schools, um, when these women were in the workplace, as soon as people recognized their abilities, which were phenomenal, the playing field was even to a, to a degree. Perhaps not always in the ability to move up the grades the levels as um, their white counterparts but um, and there was advancement 
but in terms of people pulling them on projects, as soon as they knew, you know, and, and, and one of the things that they didn't mention in here is one of the character, one of the women, um, John Glenn, actually requested her to do the numbers. When at, by that time they did have some computers to help do some of the testing, he trusted his life with her and the computer, and he wanted her. If it, if it was good with her, it was good enough for him. Whoa, where's that in our history book? I mean. I want to hear these things. I want somebody to integrate history books to include everybody that contributed and not just a select few. So, you know, you, you, when I was a kid, I wanted to be an astronaut. And all you would see were, you know, these men, white men, white shirts, black ties over the computer, and they're looking at all these monitors. And you're thinking, wow, but you never saw any reflection. But there were people there. There were people there. They were not reflected in the, uh, publicity. So this is great that this is coming out now. Now, all that said, I do, I am glad I read the book, but it was definitely a put down pickup book, a put down pickup book. I couldn't just read it and just, I wasn't just transferred and just wanted to stay with the book. If you look here, I have page flags and I got lazy. I had to use post-it notes because I was too lazy one day when I was reading. I didn't get up to get my other page flags, but a large portion of them are at the very beginning of this book. And there's facts throughout the book. My criticism or not criticism or fact that I want to point out to somebody that might want to read this book is this book is heavily filled with facts for about 85 pages before you get to these three women and to start to get a little bit more of them. What I know um, and, and thought about when I was thinking about this book is that it is a craft, it is a true skill, a talent, and it's intentional also to be able to integrate a story with facts. This book didn't do that in the sense that it was facts, then story, then facts, then story. And for some people, it may be a turnoff. So some people may put this book down because they never get to the characters and they're just like, oh my God, this is over, over, overload. So others will like it and, and still move on and make it through the book. I think that's something that needs to be said just, just because for an example, an example of a book that has the facts integrated with the story really well is, yeah, this one here. This is a good one. The Immortal Life of Henrietta Lacks by Rebecca Sch uh, Schlut. Book. Read it if you didn't read it. This is a great book. It's an important book too. Um, this was a great book because it had facts in there, but the story was was it was integrated so well that I wanted, you know, I remember like, oh my gosh, I put it down and I would, oh, I think about it and then I come back to it again. That's a good example. This has a lot of facts, but it's not the same. It doesn't carry you with story the way this one does. It's, it's like I said, on and off. Still a great book, still important information. I think it's definitely worth a read, um, but that's something that I would probably say um, was disappointing to me. Maybe because also I saw the movie and I thought this could be really um, exciting. You know, yeah, those actresses, I knew that they're going to they're gonna Hollywood eye, uh, Hollywood eyes. <laughs> They're gonna make it for Hollywood, so it's gonna be entertaining. But um, I just wish that there was a better way that she could have done that with this book. But um, the achievements in here and 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 the information in here is phenomenal. And I I don't even want to try to dig through and pull out quotes. Read it. It is a good read. This was my um, main book. The other thing that I want to say in defense of the book. I started reading it in the beginning of November and it went through the election. And I've had a bit of a transition since then. And I've just, it's very hard for me. And it, it, it's, I wanna call it a slump where I can't really read. So in all fairness to this book, perhaps if I read it at a different time, I might have um, more of a uh, positive spin and I wouldn't have been so I wouldn't have felt that all of the facts was burdensome to me when I was reading the book. That that is, has to be said because I always believe that with books. I think it's when you read it, what you've read before it, what's going on in your life, um, and and that affects your experience with the book. So 
a good book. The other two that I did was um, The Work, and I think his name was Wes Moore. I, I didn't finish that one yet. Very good um, audiobook. I, I'm not finished with that one yet. The other one I did, I can't even remember. Oh no. No, I'm not going to make you wait while I look it up. But there was another audiobook. So I did, I will say, honestly, this was at least this one I did finish for the nonfiction November. Um, the other one I can't remember right now. But, it, but a good book, you know, again, I, I, um, I definitely went on to read something a lot more light after this because I think my brain needed that. But definitely going to keep it on my shelf and we'll refer to it when I want to think about, you know, these the context of history and what was going on in that field. Um, and, um, and one of the women in particular is still alive today. I think she's 98. And I think that is... Um, I think that's Katherine Johnson, who's still alive. And she actually got a award from um, President Obama in 2015. So you could look it up and see that. And I did that. That's the other thing with this book is I was on the internet looking up things, looking at places and, and trying to see pictures um, to help me with the story too. So that's another thing that might help people. Anyway, I hope you guys have a blessed day. I don't know how long I've gone. I think I've talked too long. I've talked too long. I'm sorry. Anyway. Um, have a great day and I will see you soon. Happy reading and I'll be back. Bye.